If you build a retro PC today, chances are that you will install DOS, an operating system that resides on floppy disks or hard disks. This is literally what DOS stands for, a disk operating system. But DOS was not the first operating system that was distributed that way. CPM, an operating system created and distributed by Digital Research in 1974, was distributed on 8-inch floppy disks and was intended to be used on Intel 88-based microcomputers. A clone of CPM named 86DOS emerged in 1980, which eventually was purchased by Microsoft and renamed to MS-DOS. The driving force behind Microsoft's takeover was IBM, in search for an operating system for their IBM personal computers. Today, DOS kind of lives on. Not as the actual operating system, but the look and feel whenever we open a command prompt. Greyish white text on a black background. With Microsoft shifting its focus towards Windows, especially Windows 3.1 and Windows 95, the fate of MS-DOS was clear. Some users who used MS-DOS for many years were not happy about Microsoft's decision to neglect DOS in the future. Jim Hall was one of those people. In 1994, after Microsoft's announcement to focus on Windows, he initiated the FreeDOS project. The goal was to create a free alternative to MS-DOS with more features and support for newer hardware. Today, I will look into FreeDOS 1.3 and share my experience with this operating system, which aims to be fully compatible to MS-DOS. The idea of this video came from a comment one of you posted under the restoration video of a 386 motherboard. I'll be honest with you, I have never heard of FreeDOS before and I have never used any other DOS distribution but MS-DOS. If you want to learn more about FreeDOS, you can find many videos about the history, compatibility and functionality on YouTube. So this will not be my main focus. Phil from Phil's Computer Lab has a video where he checks game compatibility for version 1.2 and 1.3, the version I'm using today. I want to try FreeDOS on a real 386DX40 and see if FreeDOS is a real alternative to MS-DOS. We will try a couple of games and check if I can install Windows 3.1. Finally, I'm going to test if there is any difference in performance between MS-DOS and FreeDOS. You can get FreeDOS from FreeDOS.org. FreeDOS is available in many different formats. You can download CD, USB and even floppy disk images from the website. For older PCs, you probably need the floppy or the legacy CD version. But if you have a more recent retro build and you want to take full advantage of FreeDOS and all its features, you probably are better off with a live CD or the full USB image. Since I am going to run FreeDOS on real hardware, specifically a 386 motherboard with a 40 MHz CPU, my choices are limited. There is no CD drive or USB connection. Therefore, I will be using the floppy edition. After I copied the 6 floppy disk images to my floppy emulator, I booted the system from FreeDOS Disk 1. Like many operating systems, the first step involves creating a suitable partition and formatting the hard disk. This was not as easy as I thought and required a few attempts to finally succeed. The BIOS of the motherboard detects and reports a maximum hard disk size of 504MB only, even though I'm using a 2GB SD card in an SD to IDE adapter. This is a very common limitation of older motherboards and also known as the 1024 cylinder limit. There are software tools available that can mitigate this limitation and maybe one day it is time for me to look into XT-IDE. But FreeDOS requires around 20 MB of space, therefore I will settle for a single partition with 504 MB. The installation of FreeDOS took quite a while. I spent about an hour getting FreeDOS installed on my 386DX40. If I recall correctly, I read somewhere that the floppy edition utilizes compression and I suspect the decompression to take significant computing time causing the delay and long wait times. Just be aware that if you go ahead and give FreeDOS a try, the installation takes significantly longer compared to an MS-DOS installation. I have heard that this issue is limited to the floppy edition. The CD-ROM and USB version may not suffer from this problem. Once FreeDOS is installed, you can boot from the hard disk. At each start, you are asked what drivers and memory manager you want to use. Unfortunately, there is no one option fits all purposes configuration. Some games require EMS memory, others require XMS and again others may not work at all with any of the memory managers. If you do not want to look for information online, the only option you have is to try and see which option works best for the application you want to run. 
During the boot process of FreeDOS, you can see that the mouse driver and the CD driver is loaded. And then you're at the well-known and familiar command prompt. The first game I want to try is X-Wing, because of its memory requirements. And here is the first inconvenience. X-Wing requires EMS memory, which is not configured using JEMMX. For X-Wing to work, I need to boot using JEMM386. Now we have EMS memory available and I can go ahead and install X-Wing. In MS-DOS you had to jump through similar hoops and configure HiMem and EMM386. Sir, our TIE interceptors have located a rebel fleet orbiting the planet Torcana. Excellent. Prepare the attack. Move our Star Destroyers within range and launch all TIE fighter squadrons. At once, sir. I am happy to report that X-Wing seems to be working in FreeDOS. The sound effects and music are there and the game itself feels the same like under MS-DOS. I played one mission using mouse and keyboard, but I do not see any reason why a joystick wouldn't work in FreeDOS. The sound card, which is an ESS1688F, worked without issues in Sound Blaster compatibility mode. Let's move on to Doom. There is nothing to report, but everything works as expected. I am not sure if anybody will be able to tell a difference between MS-DOS and FreeDOS while playing Doom. I certainly cannot. Before I continue with Windows 3.1, I want to test the capability of FreeDOS to work with zip archives. It has built-in zippers and unzippers, even in the floppy edition. I created a test archive, which I want to extract in DOS and look at the content of the containing text file. As you can see, it is quite easy to unzip an archive and display the content of the text file on the screen. The list of features you can see here is taken from the official FreeDOS wiki page. Some of the features, like games, are only available in the full version of FreeDOS. They are not part of the floppy edition. Ok, let's move on to Windows. I don't know if you have used Windows back then, but I certainly have. In my memory, DOS always came with its body Windows 3.1. Rarely did I have a pure DOS installation on my 486 DX4 with 100 MHz. But at that time, I did not know much about operating systems. All I wanted was a working PC that allowed me to play games. I did not know that Windows 3.1 can run in two different modes. A standard mode and a 386 enhanced mode. In standard mode, which requires a 286 processor, Windows can access extended memory above the 640KB barrier, but limits non-Windows applications to run in full screen. The 386 enhanced mode requires a 386 CPU and provides access to virtual memory. Enhanced mode also allows multitasking of non-Windows applications and enables them to run in a window rather than full screen. From the documentation I understood that FreeDOS does not support running Windows 3.1 in 386 enhanced mode. And I can confirm that I was not able to run Windows in this mode. I am sure that Microsoft has nothing to do with this and they tried their very best to make Windows compatible with many other DOS distributions. <coughs> Windows 3.1 did not like any of the FreeDOS memory managers. I had to boot FreeDOS in safe mode with only a few drivers and explicitly start Windows with a flag to force standard mode. Once we are in Windows, we can verify that it is actually running in standard mode by exploring About Program Manager under the menu option Help. Unfortunately, X-Wing does not work when I try to start it from within Windows. That is all I get and the system does not recover afterwards. A reboot is the only option. Doom also did not work and terminated with a very similar error message. Of course, there may be ways to make it work but I showcase here what my experience is out of the box. There is also a project ongoing to enable 386 enhanced mode in Windows, but for this you need to have a patched FreeDOS kernel. I was not able to check it out yet, but I may do that in the future depending how well this video is doing. So if you like the content so far, please give this video a like. Let's move on to performance. Having a totally different kernel, one would expect to see some sort of difference in performance. 
I used Phil's DOS benchmark pack from Phil's computer lab to run the standard benchmarks one would expect. But there are no charts, because the results are literally identical. The only benchmark that showed a small difference was Doom. In MS-DOS, Doom scores 25 frames per second, while under FreeDOS, the benchmark reports 24.75 frames per second. If I would have run this benchmark a few more times, I'm sure I would have gotten 25 frames per second in FreeDOS as well. Very long story, very short. Performance is the same. Okay then, what do I think about FreeDOS? It is astonishing that the current version 1.3 of FreeDOS was released in 2021, and the project is still under active development. I checked the repository on GitHub, and the last commit was a week ago. Hopefully the next version of FreeDOS will allow to run Windows 3.1 in enhanced mode. I am sure there are people out there that strongly associate DOS with Windows 3.1. Copying files, for instance, is just so much easier when you get drag and drop. Of course, there are many more reasons to have Windows 3.1 installed on a retro PC. And here's the problem I see with FreeDOS. Many retro users would want to go for the real thing. Recreate how they remember their PCs from over 30 years ago. MS-DOS and Windows 3.1 Don't get me wrong, I'm amazed that FreeDOS can actually run games and even Windows. And it is really close to be a good MS-DOS replacement. However, there are still these tiny things that make you aware that this is not MS-DOS. I argue that FreeDOS is a good alternative if you do not want to get into any sort of licensing issues, but have the need for DOS. For instance, some companies may still be in need to run legacy applications, like running a report in an old accounting system, verifying something in a design or engineering software that was built for DOS, or accessing research data. Another valid area for FreeDOS would be embedded systems. Point-of-sales terminals may still require DOS to work. And with FreeDOS being truly free, nobody will ask questions regarding licensing and fees. For retro gamers, however, I do not see large adoption. And my reasoning why many people will not ditch MS-DOS is simple. FreeDOS is not MS-DOS. FreeDOS is something else. It is different. Too different. Nevertheless, I really enjoy trying FreeDOS and I may have to try the full version on a more modern platform. But let me know in the comments if you have used FreeDOS and what is your experience. Would you ditch MS-DOS for FreeDOS? Finally, I would like to thank my awesome Patreons who helped to support this channel. Thank you for your support. And with this, I'm at the end of this video. Like the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe to my channel to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.